This is what PCs used to look like when I started building, but this is what they look like now. I'm gonna show you how I built my sleeper PC, my favorite project of all time. What's crazy is that I didn't break the bank because I kept the parts affordable. I learned two crucial steps if you're thinking about building a sleeper PC for yourself, and I'm gonna show you how I did everything, what parts I chose, and of course the gaming performance. Spoiler alert, it crushes everything in 1440p. And if you're new here, I'm Zach, and I built my business to support you no matter how you start your PC gaming journey. Watch and copy my exact parts list and videos like this, use my free PC building tools on my website, or even buy a pre-built from us, I got you covered. I'm not here to push you one way or another, just trying to make PC building easier and sometimes show off cool projects like this. So let's get started. <laughs> All right, so normally I'd start at the top of the parts list with the CPU, but for a sleeper build, we gotta start at the bottom with the case. But if for some reason you don't understand what a sleeper PC is, let me try to explain it quickly. It's the same concept as a sleeper car or even a sleeper physique. <clears throat> On the outside, it can look either average or old and run down, but on the inside is where it's sneaking a whole lot of power. With this side panel installed, that gives you absolutely no clues that it's anything other than a 1990s beatdown computer that used to play Roller Coaster Tycoon and Road Rash. But as soon as you remove it, you can instantly tell that it's fully equipped with some high-end hardware that can crank out some frames. I can't even tell you what type of case this is at this point, but what I will tell you is that it's not easy to buy one these days. I I thought I was just gonna be able to search on eBay for any old case, but it's basically a monopoly out there because they're all advertised as sleeper or retro build ready and they jack up the cost. I couldn't find a single ATX sized good looking one for under $100. I ended up snagging this one on eBay for $135, which is outrageous if you ask me. When this arrived to the house, it actually came in pretty good shape. The seller advertised it as retro ready and he cleaned it out and everything for someone like me. But what I didn't like was this all metal interior. Stacked with all white components, I thought this would have looked pretty ugly. Longtime ZTT fans will know that I've never been a fan of the silver and white combo to begin with, so I decided to spray paint the internal part of the chassis before doing anything else. I taped off everything that I didn't want to paint, including this little intake fan up front. I also removed the legacy memory card reader and ancient CD and DVD drives, and then I blasted it with spray paint. It took about seven or eight coats. Remember that the first one is only a 50% opacity to give yourself a good first layer, and this ended up looking pretty solid. There is a few scuff marks already though, especially on the this latch, which hits the side panel every time I install it. But other than that, I really like how this turned out being all white on the inside. That part alone is what took the most amount of time. Other than that, this is basically just building a normal gaming PC. I decided to not try to hook up the CD and DVD drives because I didn't want to add ugly IDE cables all over the build. Boomers will know what I'm talking about. I think I can still power them up though with Molex connectors and use them as motorized cup holders. I'll make a YouTube short about that, so make sure you're subscribed if you aren't already. Aside from that though, this is just now a normal ATX size case and you're just gonna build it like you would any other PC. I didn't want to make this like a $3,000 sleeper build, so for the CPU, I just went with a Ryzen 5 9600X, which I grabbed off Amazon for $190. Links for this, along with everything else I'm showing off today, are in the description. These went down to $150 during Prime Day, which was insane, but now the price seems to be holding strong around $190 to $200, which is still quite good. The 9600X can hang with any top-of-the-line graphics card, and with AM5, you know we'll get some future-proofing upgrading options for more years to come. Speaking of AM5, for the motherboard, this is the ASRock X870 Steel Legend Wi-Fi. I would have probably gone with this one regardless, because the Steel Legend series has always been my favorite for the all white builds, but this was actually bundled in an Amazon combo deal with the graphics card. We'll talk about that one in just a bit. Next up is the RAM, and this is the T-Force Delta RGB white DDR5 kit clocked at 6,000 megahertz with a CL rating of 30. Remember that for basically any AM5 system, that's a great search filter to use on PC part picker. Feel free to go with whichever kit has the best deal with the aesthetics that you're looking for. This Delta RGB kit has been a staple for both my own builds and especially our pre-builds on zttbuilds.com. After that, we have the SSD, and yet again, the Clevcraft C910 makes an appearance. But this time I got the two terabyte drive because I have some plans for this sleeper build after I'm done with this video, which I'll explain towards the end. The C910 just continues to be one of the most affordable Gen 4 options available. So if you're looking to not break the bank and still get a reliable drive, this is exactly what I've been using for like 80% of my builds in 2025. And to polish off this motherboard prep, I actually intended to use an Arctic CPU cooler because I really like this one model that I was talking about on the live stream. I have a full ZTT Extras video all about it. 
Dude, that is actually insane. But unfortunately, it ended up being just a few too many millimeters high, so I couldn't close the side panel of the case with that one installed. After I found that out, we just swapped it out to the typical thermal right white cooler that we always use. I'll definitely have to find a spot for that Arctic cooler in an upcoming project. And if you want to see that live stream of me building the sleeper PC, but don't want to sit through the PC giveaway drawing, me drinking beer and yapping all night, we always edit down a condensed down version of the stream with just the PC building steps that's posted over on the ZTT Extra channel already. But now that the motherboard is prepped, let's move on to the power supply. And this definitely isn't a normal choice for me. This is the 2025 Corsair RM750E model. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it as it's a high quality unit. It's rated tier B plus on the new and improved PSU tier list, which you can find totally for free at zttbuildhelp.com. The only problem with it is that it's usually a little bit too expensive for me personally. The reason why I spent the extra money today though is because I wanted all white cables and it wouldn't be a good idea to use cable extensions in a case like this you would be able to clearly see the black cables stuffed up at the top with the power supply. And there's also no room to properly cable manage all that extra slack. So with a PSU like this, the cables already come all white and it's also fully modular. So I only have to put in the cables that I actually need. I was a little disappointed with this newer model though, because it doesn't come with any Molex connectors. That's how I would have powered the cup holders up here. So I'm gonna have to try to find a solution for that. I also needed a solution to replace the double Molex rear 80 millimeter fan here. I just searched for one on Amazon. Amazon and found this Thermalrite TLB8W for like 10 bucks. It's powered by just the PWM cable now, so it's perfect. What's also perfect is this graphics card because honestly, it's exactly what I wanted. It's the ASRock Steel Legend RX 9070 XT. Again, this was bundled on Amazon with the Steel Legend motherboard. And with this combo price, it ended up coming out to about $800 for the GPU. That's certainly well beyond MSRP, which is a shame, but we all know the game of GPU pricing at this point. Not only are both the 9070s and 9070 XT is one of the toughest to find right now, but the all white models, even before the GPU supply issues were always more expensive. The combo deal did make it an easy choice and we'll see soon in the benchmarking section how it still dominates every game in 1440p. Before that though, here's what the final parts list is looking like. And like I said, it isn't a completely unreasonable sleeper build. I paid under $1,700, which don't get me wrong, it's still a lot of money. I was just trying to avoid going down the completely obnoxious route with like a 9800X3D and a 5090. I understand that most people probably aren't interested in spending that kind of money on just a sleeper build. But what's cool is that you can copy the entire parts list for this if you just swap out the case. If you changed out the $135 retro ready case that I overpaid for, everything else is still tuned for a pretty solid system. If you threw all these parts in a Montec, Corsair, or Lee and Lee case, it would still be a beauty. It's actually crazy how super simple building a sleeper PC is as long as you get an ATX sized case. Also, be sure it has enough room for a large GPU if that's what you end up using. I specifically tried to avoid going down the route of having to use a Dremel to hack off pieces off the case so I could fit this 9070 XT. And speaking of which, let's finally test this out and we'll run all the normal modern day titles. I am flirting with the idea about making some YouTube shorts about benchmarking this thing with like the old retros 90 games. So comment down below which games you think I should test if I do that. Starting with the finals, which I know many of you want us to continue showing off in benchmarking, even with 1440p in epic settings, we got a 135 average FPS consider that crushed. Here's Marvel Rivals, where we got a similar FPS of 130 using 1440p and high settings. Cyberpunk and 1440p Ultra got right around there as well with 126 FPS using no sort of upscaling or anything. And here's Fortnite using 1440p and Pro settings shooting all the way up to 312 FPS. The 9600X and 9070XC are already a proven and dominant 1440p combination. Here's the rest of the benchmarks. And if you wanna see the full gameplay clips, the full dedicated benchmarking video for the sleeper PC is posted to the ZTD Extras channel. We've also been uploading some pretty good shorts content over there. Make sure you drop a sub if you've been enjoying it so we know to keep on making it. And real quickly, I do wanna talk about the cooling because part of this cooling setup is completely fake news. The part up front that I didn't paint inside the case is a fan housing unit, but I never ended up plugging in the fan that's inside of here. It's meant to be a decent intake fan and it even has a PWM connector. Honestly, I think I just forgot about it because I initially didn't wanna plug in an ugly color cable. If you wanted to go all out I guess you could probably swap out the fan that's in there for something a bit more aesthetic. Either way, it's completely unplugged up here. So the only case fan that's helping with cooling right now is this tiny little one in the back. But that's what's really interesting and hopefully it highlights just how far you don't have to min max cooling because this build is still perfectly fine. Both the 9600X and 9070XT are reasonably power efficient by themselves without basically any case fan helping keeping them cool. The temperatures are still okay. Here's Doom the Dark Ages blasting the 9070XT 
to a full utilization, and as you can see, it's staying right at the low 60s. Here's Monster Hunter Wilds, which puts the CPU anywhere between 50 to 70%, and that's still staying under 70. I always try to tell people that if you're using new hardware, you really don't have to stress about the cooling. I'm gonna be using this build from now on as another data point to drive that home. The other point I wanna drive home is just sincere appreciation for the motivation to do a project like this. I've seen so many sleeper build request comments over the years, and it was finally time to get one like this done. I've also decided to keep this build for myself, and it's gonna be the streaming PC that I use here in the ZTT HQ. Every other stream has always been at my house, but I wanna start doing some midday office streams, so we'll all be seeing this sleeper build more often here soon. Feel free to follow on Twitch if you aren't already. And again, if you want to see a bit more about this sleeper PC, like the building live stream or the benchmarking video, they're up on the screen right now and posted to the ZTT Extras channel.